Hey guys, it's Vic. With Splatoon 3 growing ever closer, you gotta wonder what the development team would do if Splatoon 3 was to have Salmon Run. I personally believe that Salmon Run won't be in the next game just because, you know, we, we have our little buddy. But what if we did have Salmon Run? What kind of bosses could we expect? Assuming we don't see the return of any specials from previous Splatoon games, we still have quite a bit of room to think. We can start with the Trizuka. So this special is probably one that breaks Salmon Run unless it's handled the right way. <laughs> if it wants to not be broken, this Inkzuka has to be unable to splat the player in the first turn. If this was the case, you'd see a lot of downed Inklings and Octolings in those freelance matches. Ah, no. A boss like this means that you and your teammates will have to be quick at communicating, or maybe this way. <laughs> if you want to keep that Zookazilla from firing its shots from across the map. A way to balance out a three-shot and Inkzuka weapon type dealy dad might be just to let you shoot back at it. Maybe if you fire enough times at an incoming Inkzuka from this, it'll just dissipate. I don't think it'll do that in the real game, but that'd be a good way to get around the fact that it could probably kill you in like two shots. <laughs> Maybe the maps in Splatoon 3 Salmon Run might have a few more boxes and small cliffs and little things in the way that you could run behind very quick to avoid being shot by an Inkzuka. That'd be a great way to balance it out seeing as the Inkzuka does tend to go away if it goes over a box. Now the Killer Whale 5.1. We know that an alternative version of the Killer Whale is coming to Splatoon 3, and we've discussed before how absolutely broken Killer Whale would be in Salmon Run. But what if we had a weaker, but still effective alternative? Instead of firing straight, there could be lights that appear on the floor, showing exactly where five Killer Whale blasts are gonna pop out. If the players have a few seconds to react before the blasts go off, that might prevent as many instant splats from Killer Whales. You know as long as there aren't two or even three of these bosses active at the same time. Good luck dodging 10 to 15 different tiny little killer whale lasers. To balance this out, it might be necessary to limit where the killer whales can exactly come from. We could let them appear on any inkable surface, including walls but not including grates, and maybe limit them to only going straight vertically or horizontally across the map. Just be careful standing on a grate that has an inkable surface underneath it. Last thing you want to do is be hit from a killer whale from below, right? Now, the crab tank is our brand new mech that I could talk about for ages. But what if we put a chum inside of one of those bad boys instead? From the window of a rusted metal spear, you can see the eyes of a salmonid staring back at you as it rolls maliciously close ready to fire steelhead bombs <laughs> what a way to remember the steelheads and the way they used to be but more on that later in the video the chum's little mech is a little slow to get going that'll give you time for you and your teammates to flank behind and splat the chum but watch out after you get the chum out of there it'll begin to glow a little bit before it finally blows up in one last steelhead explosion this will make it a bit more dangerous to be standing so close to the mech, which normally wouldn't be able to harm the player. In the end, a boss like this would be all about timing, because you gotta watch out for when it's rolling around and when you can actually shoot at it. In a way, it might feel kind of like the Drizzler, as you'll have to wait for a certain point in time to be able to actually shoot at it. You'll have to watch it roll and watch it pop out. Just like the Drizzler, you had to watch it fly in the air and then come back down and then you could hit it. Hey. Okay, okay, Zipcaster. We know the Zipcaster is arguably the fastest special, so we should be giving it a fast-moving salmonid. Enter the humble little small fry with a motorized propeller on its head. Yep, you'd laugh at it, you know it. Might be a little bit of a terrible sight for little buddy too. <laughs> Now, the maps of Salmon Run are a bit too flat to really let the Zipcaster take advantage of random in the air platforming, so let's allow the small fry to fly up in the air in a flash, stay up there for a few seconds, and then dash down into a target. That's you, of course. This fast fry <laughs> would be easy to splat when it's in the air, if you can reach it. Perhaps only a long range gun, a splatling, or a charger would have the height needed to splat it from up high. After a descent, though, it would also stay on the
the ground for a few seconds to regain its footing before flying off into the air again. And you know what? That might be the perfect chance to take it out. Think of it like a glass cannon. A hard hitter, fast on the offense, but pretty bad at keeping itself out of a bad situation. And on top of that, not a lot of HP. Whoops! Kind of like those little guys that fly down from the mothership, but a small fry. And don't think I'm forgetting about the big bubbler. We know that the big bubbler stops opposing ink from being able to get inside its shield when it's activated. So how could this translate to salmon run? Imagine a boss that is unable to actually harm the player, but does activate a big bubbler for, let's say, 7 seconds before deactivating it for another 7 seconds. This quickly becomes a problem if you have, let's say, two of them, and also, you know, enemy salmon is on the map. Imagine trying to fire at a cohawk just to be held up by some big bubbler shield. The boss would be easy to take down when the shield isn't active, so all you gotta do is not forget that it's walking around on the map. Sounds just annoying enough to make it into Salmon Run, right? Just imagine one of those spawning a little too close to our crab mech boss. <laughs> and then you just have to watch as it just runs around and makes a mess and you can't do anything about it. But you might think to yourself, hey, five bosses doesn't really seem like enough. So let's pretend that the bomb launcher survives into Splatoon 3. It feels pretty much like a given, since we've had it in both Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2, so why not throw it in this game too? Currently, we do have steelheads that can throw one large exploding bomb, but what if the steelhead is genetically altered in Splatoon 3? Instead of one very large bomb that players have to aim at, we can give it three small bombs that it throws. This tritanium head will throw three burst bomb-like projectiles off its head after a set period of two seconds, back away from you, and then throw them again. This would be a steelhead subclass that wouldn't be slow and angry, and maybe it would cause some players some trouble if they don't learn how to adapt to quickly aiming at a short-lived target. Then again, maybe I'll be wrong about Nintendo wanting to keep Salmon Run as a mode exclusive to Splatoon 2, and we'll see some of these things actually happen. If you liked this video, I also tried theorizing ideas for bosses that could have been in Splatoon 1 in a video I've linked in the description. If you like hearing me ramble about Splatoon 3, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you for listening, and have a good one.